Hey everybody, how are you? You know, it's been a while since I've been um, since I've been posting videos. I've got, you know, we got five kids and we have got company staying with us, relatives staying with us. There's a lot been going on, and I apologize for not um, getting back to anybody. I just, you know, I start not posting, and then I feel guilty, and I've got like 2,000 messages in my message box, and I and I look at it and I get intimidated, and I, you know, anyway, enough about me. I want to talk to you about some news events that I think are very important. Coney. Coney's this uh, uh, African murderer. If you look and see what he's done, it's just absolutely disgusting and off the charts. About 10 years ago, this Coney thing should have gone viral. It's gone viral now, and it's kind of too late in a way because he's already gone from that area. But he still needs to be brought to justice. I only have one, one objection to this big campaign with the viral videos about Make Coney Famous is that I think, I think making an unknown murderer, homicidal, genocidal maniac, making that kind of person internationally known is a great idea because then all of a sudden society pressures our leaders to get rid of the guy. The problem is I, one little thing. I would change it instead of the program's called Make Coney Famous. It should be called Make Coney Infamous because famous has a positive connotation to it. And Hitler, Hitler was not famous. Hitler was infamous. So instead of a program called Make Coney Famous, they should change the name and call it Make Coney Infamous. Make Coney Infamous. There's a lot going on in Afghanistan. Uh, we had an American soldier go rogue and kill a bunch of innocent people. And we had... Uh, um, Quran burnings. Now, first off, as far as the American soldier going rogue and killing people and pictures of American soldiers urinating on dead Afghanis, it's vulgar, it's wrong. Um, it shouldn't make us, it shouldn't make me or anyone else hate all American soldiers or all Americans because every soldier, just like every Afghani, are their own person, their own individual. The thing that, that I don't like is the situation. The situation over there is wrong, but when people get angry and you're in the streets, People don't go to the streets screaming, I hate this situation. We should hang this situation. See, you can't go after a situation. You have to go after a person or a group. Um, public relations are horrible over there. And you know what? We're over there killing people. Uh, it's like a war. It's a war going on. And, and maybe it's time we get out of there. And But while we're there, I think there needs to be a balance with respect to humanity. And I know there's a lot of great American soldiers over there trying to do the right thing. But I've also heard from soldiers I know coming back that some soldiers exist in a culture over there where uh, um, Afghanis are less than them, less than human. And, you know, I could see that in a war zone, training your soldiers to think that the enemy is less than human so you don't hesitate when you're pulling the trigger. But <clears throat> that backfires. And, uh, and I'm surprised that these, the killing spree that the soldier did, um, I'm surprised there aren't more of them. And maybe there are more of them that we never even hear about. <clears throat> so a lot of people say, well, this isn't just America just mind its own business. And I say, okay, yeah, America should just mind its own business. But how do I mind my own business and how do we mind our own business with Syria? We're minding our own business kind of right now and it feels wrong and it makes me sick what's happening in Syria. Um, and I, I wish America, I wish America would go in there. Then we go in there and all of a sudden something happens and we kill innocent people over there and we're the bad guy again. So in a lot of ways, when you get involved, you're always going to upset somebody and you're always going to make mistakes and your army isn't a bunch of automatons who are going to do what you tell them to do. They all have their individual psyches and war makes people crazy and angry and hateful and innocent people get killed and, uh, so I don't even know what I think about it. I just know that uh, um, it's a bad situation. And, and I saw that people were going crazy over Quran burnings. And some people here in America say, look at those crazy Arabs going crazy over Quran burnings. I go, well, let's put this in perspective. One, it, the Quran burning is kind of the camel. The Quran burning, in my opinion, is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back because there's already so much going on over there. We're already over there. They don't want us over there. And this is people are getting killed. So the Quran burning could be just the icing on the cake, just another excuse to outrage people. Um, 
And they say, well, it's only the Muslims that do that. I go, well, you know, okay. If it's only the Muslims that do that, uh, I don't think that's true. If you were to go take the Jewish Bible, take the Torah, and go to certain places in Israel, I bet you could get yourself killed uh, lighting that book on fire some places in Israel. I bet after 9-11, I bet if you went into an Irish pub after the 9-11 tragedy and uh, um, started uh, jumping up and down, laughing and celebrating, maybe uh, um, lighting the American flag on fire in a bar after 9-11, you could probably find yourself killed. So uh, um, and I think a lot of people over there that are rioting aren't very educated either. And it's hard to focus and channel all that energy when you feel so helpless, when you have guys with guns over there controlling your environment. Um, and you know, another one, for Christians, there was, a, there was a, an art, a painting of a cross, of a crucifix, soaked in urine. Uh, Andre Serrano was the artist that did it. It was called Piss Christ. And it made Christians angry all over. They just... Decades later, they were showing it um, abroad, somewhere in Europe, and uh, um, this group of Christians broke in, attacked the guards, damaged the photograph, and um, and attacked the uh, attacked the guards and the curators of this uh, exhibit. So, if you're wondering why Muslims are burning Qurans, just imagine something that's sacred to you. And if you're religious and very religious, you probably have things that are sacred to you. And you get a group of people together and you urinate on or light on fire or something that's sacred to them, you might find yourself dead. There was an assumption from Americans, such as myself, that when Egypt was uh, liberated from Mubarak, that it would automatically become a democracy like ours. Now, I know a lot of people say our democracy isn't a democracy, and in a lot of ways it isn't, but we still get to vote, and our vote actually does count in a way. Um, and some, I've had Muslims tell me, you know, we don't want that. We don't want a democracy. But my, my concern is that if you're in a Muslim country and you don't want a democracy and you don't want freedom, I feel that if, if you're willing to accept some other version of law other than freedom, that in time, the leaders will find a way to be kings and czars and um, beyond reproach and untouchable. You'll never get rid of them and you'll end up with another Mubarak. You'll end up with another Assad. See, you, if we had a Mubarak or an Assad here in America, in the end of his four terms, he'd be four years. In the end of his four years, he'd be gone. So I say everybody should strive for the type of government to where, when they don't like it, they can vote it out. And if you if you think freedom's a bad thing, look where the Arab world is right now. Every you know, every, all these countries are ruled by dictators, and they can do what they want. They're above the law. Um, They have freedoms and rights that you don't have. And I think everybody should strive for a government where you can vote to change it. Um, And you know another thing, I'm I'm covering a lot of topics today. Obama has approved, and they've been doing it, you know, we can kill Americans um, overseas. This guy, Al Locke, you you send a drone over there and you kill a person. Now, in America, with our Constitution, it's supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Yet now we have authorized killing American citizens overseas. By that same logic, if it's legal to kill somebody who you haven't even tried yet for a crime, if you can kill them and send a drone over there, by the same logic, you should be able to kill somebody here in America. So if there is somebody who you think has done a crime, uh, the government could uh, um, kill him, just kill him, seek him out. If he's hiding in a house, bomb it or burn it down. It's the same logic that we used um, to uh, kill uh, 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 this uh, American cleric. Um, Was he in Yemen? Anyway, so that's scary stuff that we need to be watching out for. So anyway, those are just a few thoughts that I have that I'd like to share with you. And and to everybody that has wished us well, thank you very much. And oh, Our family, we'd like to move to Morocco for a while, I think Morocco, to study Arabic as a family. And I can't find anywhere where they'll take little kids and help us learn Arabic. So if you know anywhere, anywhere we could go to get a good tutor um, to to stay with us while we stay there. We want to stay for a few months in Morocco. Anyway, um, blessings to everybody. Masalama. Shalom. Um, What else do you say? To the atheists. Hey. Anyway, okay, take care, everybody. See ya.